they are in a, their own sort of energy week. It is sure. self-described, fairly self-limiting, uh, short of a couple bills that have seen some Democrat support. Um, and it's largely intended as sort of a counter-messaging ahead of the 2024 elections, presenting what Republicans see as uh, their answer to the Biden administration's uh, harmful energy policies, which are, in their view, harmful energy policies, right. which they say, you know, have cut into U.S. production, hurt oil and gas producers, and drive up energy costs. Welcome to Reporter's Notebook, where we talk to the Washington Examiner's top journalists about the stories breaking on their beats. I'm Jim Mantle, and I'm joined today by energy and environment reporter Brianne Deppish. Brianne, what was the big news about electric vehicles and tailpipes this week? Yes, so the Biden administration released its long-awaited final uh, tailpipe reduction sort of uh, guidance for mm -hmm. Uh, for EVs, for um, for hybrid vehicles, and everything else, uh, for model years 2027 through the end of the decade. Um, noticeably, it's sort of an overture to while they are still the strongest ever uh, tailpipe standards. Um, as the EPA pointed out, uh, they do sort of represent a bit of an overture to manufacturers in the labor industry. That's because there's a slight softening in the targets. Mm -hmm. uh, they actually are targeting slightly less um, of, a, of an emissions reduction target from model years 2027 and through the end of the decade. Um, still, they've been heavily, heavily uh, criticized by manufacturing groups. The tailpipes wasn't a muffled response. Yes, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And they resolutely, uh, you know, sort of roundly criticized the administration uh, for this action, regardless of, of the overture, saying that they will still drive up consumer costs, um, you know, and force Americans to electrify the fleet. Uh, you know, put sort of strain on grids faster than we are ready for. Mm -hmm. So House Republicans are going to have Energy Week. They have, yes, they are having Energy Week as we speak. Mm -hmm. um, it's sort of, yeah, they are in a, their own sort of Energy Week. It is sure. self-described, fairly self-limiting, uh, mm -hmm. short of a couple bills that have seen some Democrat support. Um, and it's largely intended as sort of a counter-messaging ahead of the 2024 elections, presenting what Republicans see as uh, their answer to the Biden administration's uh, harmful energy policies, which are, in their view, harmful energy policies, right. which they say, you know, have cut into U.S. production, hurt oil and gas producers, and drive up energy costs. Mm -hmm. So there's been a bevy of legislation on this front, uh, everything to sort of NEPA reform, to carbon tax efforts, uh, to other just sort of messaging bills mm -hmm. presenting uh, that take aim at the Biden administration for various actions, such as the LNG pause and other things that you and I have discussed over the past year or so. <laughs> sure. So what you're saying is, though, that mainly what they're trying to do is show what they would do if they had the power, rather than these are bills that are likely to be advanced, you know, before the election or at some point this year. Exactly. Realistically, none of these bills will be brought to the Senate floor uh, mm -hmm. ever. But yes, they are they are likely designed to sort of uh, give Republicans uh, stuff to campaign on in the in the months and the year ahead, um, and to sort of yeah present American voters with uh, what you know a Republican controlled Congress, what a Republican controlled White House might look like in the next administration. And so is there any main takeaway uh, of Energy Week? Is it mainly about the high energy prices and sort of folding that into, I guess, a little bit with, with the whole inflation messaging against Biden? It's that, it's sort of uh, different overtures. They say we've sacrificed a lot of U.S. energy security uh, mm -hmm. at the hands of China and Russia. You know, uh, a lot of stuff about drilling and uh, sort of hammering Biden, especially hard on the LNG pause, among other things. So we're gonna see a lot of fossil fuel messaging, um, a lot of projects that they say have been stalled as a result of various BLM, uh, land protections, and, and things like that. And for you, every week is Energy Week. Exactly. That's what I like to say. <laughs> Thank you for bringing the energy, Brianne. Thank you. You can read Brianne and subscribe to our Daily on Energy newsletter at WashingtonExaminer.com.